I've shown off my various builds all through the life of this channel. My first ever setup tour was my 1000 subscriber special. I had a 980 Ti, 16GB of DDR3 RAM paired with an i7-3770K, and it was all housed in my ginormous Corsair 750D. I really did like showing off this build, even though the footage was complete garbage. After some time, I started working at Falcon Northwest as a hardware technician, and I got a few sponsors from different companies that helped me with my upgrades. I ended up with two 1080 Ti's, an Intel 8700K, and 32GB of Unicorn Puke RGB RAM. To be completely honest, the crazy LEDs in this GameDS case were over the top, but there was something charming about it. GameDS really liked me at the time. They gave me the computer case, the RGB liquid cooler, a 1200 watt RGB power supply. It was definitely a YouTuber's wet dream PC. Then I went and lived in Vietnam. Instead of bringing my RGB epilepsy, I instead brought my PS5. This was a little media PC that I kept in the living room. A 1080 Ti, 16GB of DDR4 RAM, and my first ever AMD processor, the Ryzen 7 1700. That travel PC served me well, and I used it until I got back to America. Fast forward a few years and I'm going on a road trip. I sold my Rainbow Station for a laptop, the Asus ROG Zephyrus G15, which had an Intel 10750H, a GTX 2070 Super Max Q, and then I also threw in a 2TB M.2 SSD and 40GB of RAM for video editing. This little thing went everywhere with me on the road trips, but when I got back home, I knew I wanted something more powerful. I missed having a desktop, and I felt like I was spitting in the face of my inner hardware technician. That is when I decided to build this. A micro PC equipped with 32GB of RGB DDR4 RAM, the Ryzen 5600X, and a 3070 Ti which kicks the ass of any game I run, and all of that housed in a slim and beautiful Node 202 case. See, the thing was, I hated the black color of this case. I wanted something unique, so I took the case, six cans of spray paint, and two days with some of my friends, and we went to town on this thing until it was beautiful. And I gotta brag here, I haven't seen a custom PC this gorgeous in a while. So let's talk about this setup. This is easily the setup that I'm the proudest of. Working with Adam got me into a fix-it slash DIY mindset, so putting a PC in this tiny case was something I had to work around. Putting it together wasn't the hard part. I'd built tiki's and frag boxes at Falcon all the time. It was the airflow that was the problem. And after playing around with a 3D printing program, I finally crafted myself a fan duct that would set up against the CPU fan and the case for maximum airflow. I went from almost 90 degrees Celsius to 66 in most games, and that's even in silent mode. But enough about the building process, let's talk about this setup. Initially this PC was right on my desk, and it was being hidden by my big monitor, which was a shame. I spent days painting it just to hide it? That's lame, right? So I went online and found myself an under desk mount for computer cases. I set it up under my desk, and now I have a PC that can swivel in any direction and it's viewable from my space. The next thing I did was attach my external drives. See, I have one drive full of video stuff and the other drive is my photos, emulation games, and miscellaneous other stuffs. Instead of pulling them off my desk and plugging them in when I need them, I took some Velcro and stuck them to the other side of this desk mount. This way, if I need to access one of my drives, I can just plug it in from its static position and I'm good to go. The last thing I did with this mount has to do with my controller. See, my father bought himself a white Xbox Slim controller, and I really liked it because it can Bluetooth right to your PC without needing a dongle. Well, he gave it to me, and I spent a day spraying it up so it matched my PC. I then 3D printed a mount for it, and now if I want a game, I just unholster my controller and I'm good to go. Now, this next part is just going to be me bragging here, but would you just look at how neatly cable managed everything is? I mean, for the love of God, look at this! Oh, wait, hang on, don't look that hard! Uh, okay, but you're not going to see that from afar, alright? Uh, let's move on. On top of my desk, I have my Klipsch R41PM speakers. I got these when I worked at Best Buy, and the quality of these things is astounding. For not having a subwoofer, these things really punch those low frequencies, and when I'm gaming, ugh, don't even get me started, they're just beautiful. As for my recording device, this is a funny story. I was in a pawn shop in Utah. When I walked in, I noticed two Shure SM7Bs just sitting there. I asked the guy if he knew what they were, and he just said, I don't know man, a microphone? They were going for 380 bucks, so I asked him how much he'd sell it for, and he said, I don't know, maybe I'd take $100 off and tax if you buy something else. I was sold. I bought the mic and this neat little telescope. I also got some phantom power while I was at it. While I was checking out, the manager got back from lunch and he saw the sale. 
he was pissed off, but I got my dream mic for 250 bucks. As for my headset, I don't really game much with headsets, so if I ever need it, I have my Sony XM3s and they do the job. I have two monitors, which is essential, and if you don't have two monitors, you really should look into it because you'll never go back. One of them is a 31.5 inch Acer EB321HQ. It's a pretty standard monitor, and I got it from a friend. 60Hz, 1080p, 4 millisecond response time, but the colors are great, and I love watching TV and YouTube on this thing. My second monitor is my gaming monitor. I got this on Facebook Marketplace for really cheap. The kid didn't even know it was a 144Hz panel. This is a 27-inch, 1080p, 144Hz, Asus VP249. I was able to mount it to the edge of my desk, and anytime I play video games, this is the screen for me. The last two peripherals are my keyboard and mouse. The keyboard hasn't been updated in a while, and that's because I love it so much. This is the Logitech G915. It's a full-sized wireless keyboard with great response time. I have some macro keys on the side here for video games or whatever you want to program them for. I have mine set to open specific programs that I use the most, like Steam or Photoshop. Then there's my mouse. This is the Model O Wireless. It's a really light mouse, which I don't like so much, but it's easy to travel with and it looks great. Now, this setup is clean, and it's great because right behind me is my green screen setup. I just whip out my camera, grab my lights from the closet, pull down on the green screen, and I'm ready to tell my tales. Of all the setups I've had, this is my absolute favorite. It's sleek, it's light, it's non-intrusive, and I don't get lost in the days of my LEDs. Another great thing is it's portable. I can bring this PC over to my friend's house and LAN any time, and I plan on making a white leather handle on top of the case so I can lug it around easier. For now though, I still have my laptop, which makes it easier for stuff like that. I remember a long time ago I wanted to call my setup pure black. As of right now, I think calling it black and blue is a bit more fitting and kind of badass. Customizing your builds and setups can be challenging, but when it's done, it's one of the most rewarding feelings ever. Honestly though, if you're like me, you're never really done. But for the time being, this is perfect. Now if I can only get my cats to stop scratching up my weed chair, that's a habit I'm really gonna have to nip in the bud.